once we get all the plates down, well then we put all the marks on it so we can build a wall. We show the location of every door, we show the location of every window, and of every stud. Sometimes there's electrical units that go in there, we have to lay out for them. All the layout goes on these walls before we're ready to frame. Like on some crews, you're just a layout guy, and that's what you do, and you want to make it so once your guy starts building, he's going to build everything in that wall that there is to be built. you got to watch your plans. You take a look at your plans and see where all this stuff is. And you do the layout there so it doesn't get in the way of another trade. Because uh, if you do get in the way, well, then something somebody has to come back and tear some studs out or... You know, and that's, 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 we don't want to do that. We want to get it right the first time. I'd have a tendency to mark my corners and channels first, because then you know exactly, you know where you are. Especially when you're standing walls, you need that line on the inside yeah, to know sure. exactly. So here's the way we mark corners. Oh, wait, wait, wait. This tool is what? Corner marker. Cor okay. Yeah. Corner and channel marker. And you can make one. We'll make one out of a bit here. So if you don't have this, you can make one out of wood real easy. Okay. So this is used to mark the location of where this butt wall gets into the through wall. So when we're framing, we know where to put our studs and we know where to, to uh, so we won't get things in the way. Mm -hmm. So we lay that on the corner like that. And we mark here, and we mark here, and we mark here on the outside because when this plate is laid back it's good to have that mark. So when you're marking corners and channels if you don't have this particular tool you can make one out of wood either 2 by 6 or 2 by 4 and what you do is take two pieces of 2 by 6 like this and let it hang over 3 inches because that's the thickness of your two plates and nail it together A couple of 16 pennies. And then you can come to a corner like this, set it on there, you mark here, and across here, and up here. And that shows you the location of the corner. It's definitely more important on the interior wall <coughs> to have some marks because otherwise, when you raise this wall, where does it go? And these marks here show you where this butt wall, this interior wall, goes. You mark it in the same way. You mark all sides of it. Like that, and this hole's like here. And you mark it like that. Okay? And then we got a tube form wall down here. And we got a tube form, of course you can use this. Do that on all your corners. Even out here. Scott's got another way. It works just as well. Well, my way would be, I like Larry's tool, but normally I would just use a square. I would just follow the plates up, square it across, square it down, like that. And then at the same time, I would come through and set my double top plate. Now on this, I'd have to bring it back at least four feet because this bore is the same length as the plates we were using and the double top plate has got to span any break in the plates below by four feet minimum either side. Right. So if I come out four feet, I can just chop this at the line, nail it, and work my way that way. If you're going to do this, the only reason to go through the trouble now of applying the double top plate now is that you can then, before you start building walls, after you've got all your wall layout in, you can run your joist layout on top. And then that gets all the joist layout done while the walls are on the ground and it's there when they're up and then that way you're not walking plates to run joist layout, you're not on a ladder to run joist layout. But one thing about this is that if you if you don't want to if you don't want to uh, to double top plate all your walls, the only walls you have to plate are the walls that have joists on it. Yeah. So this wall here, right here, is not going to have any joists on it. So you don't necessarily have to put 
a double play, top plate there. You can do that in the process of framing that wall. Yeah. We'll run the double top plate where we're going to have joists. We'll worry about the rest as we're actually framing walls. Our next project, after we have all of our plates down, is to lay out the wall, detail the walls, where everything's going to go in the wall, studs, whatever's in the wall, windows, doors, all of those get laid out. And you can do it with a tape, a 50-foot tape, you can, you can go down the wall with a 50-foot tape. I prefer to use a layout stick. These tools right here. This particular tool is 49 and a half inches long. And with a leg on it, every 16 inches on center. So you can use this to locate studs that are 16 inches on center. In this particular building, they're 24 inches on center. So for that one, we need one with a leg in the middle. From here to this leg is 24 inches on center. Here to this leg, it's 16 inches on center. So we're ready to do a little layout. When we start our layout, we have to think about plywood going on this side. So we start half on here. Okay, it's not like that, and not like that. But if you want 48 inches on center, you start like that. From the center of that one to the center of this one is four feet. That's the way you get started. So we mark both sides. And then we come down here at two feet more. And that gives us our layout. Two here, and then we start again. Lay that right on there. Make sure you're right on that mark. Mark it two feet. And four feet. This layout stick is a homemade one. This one is a commercial one that you can buy. It has longer legs, as you can see. So when you have it, you can go clear to the bottom. But it doesn't have a two-foot marker on it. So that's why I'm using this other one. And that's where the stud falls when we build a wall. And this mark on this double top plate that's where your joist will sit, right there. These are for your wall studs, this is for your joist. I didn't make a mark here because there's already a stud here that goes right here. It'll go right here. It's a stud to make this corner. There'll be one right here also. These walls here lay out a little differently. We mark it like this. There you go. Every two foot you get a stud. Same down here on this wall. There's two foot. There's four foot. And one more down here. Then we go around and we lay out every stud in every wall. So when we're doing wall layout, I think the main thing to do is that don't put any more marks on the wall than are absolutely needed but make sure that the marks that you put on the wall are clear and to the point so the people that are framing the wall know what to do. The problem is that some layout people will put so damn many marks on the wall that it's uh, confusing. So in this case, simplicity and clarity, those are the keys. Somebody say amen, huh? Amen. <laughs>